All right, guys, welcome back. So today, let's talk about dividend investing, dividend growth investing. Uh, it can also apply to crypto, but mainly it's for dividend stocks. And one of the greatest little things to building up your wealth is dividend stocks and reinvesting those dividends and growth investing. You can also, like I said, do that with crypto and have stuff like Raptorium put on iNode Z where you're staking it and you're getting rewards and then those rewards are going back in to buy uh, more Raptorium and just keep compounding and compounding. And that is the beauty here. And again, like I said, it applies to equities, growth, uh, dividend stocks, uh, not just growth, but dividend stocks and crypto that allows you to get interest and rewards like with Voyager, the Voyager uh, platform where I have crypto and I get interest on it and rewards every month. And it comes to quite a nice little chunk of change, but I have those reinvested back into the crypto on which they are gaining interest. So if I get interest on um, Ethereum, that reward, that interest I make every month is given to me in Ethereum. So it just keeps growing and growing and growing. That's the beauty of this. And I'm trying to apply it, like I said, to crypto. But this article I'm going to go through, uh, this email I got is a great description of dividend growth investing. So let's just go through it and you can get an example of what I'm talking about if you're new to it and uh, how to do it. Because again, if you just go buy a Tesla or something like that, a stock, an NVIDIA, these companies do not pay dividends. So you're just going to hold it and you're not getting rewarded for holding that stock until you sell it, hopefully at a gain. So during that time, and mostly it's going to be more than a year because you don't want to pay short-term capital gains. But you can hold a stock for 10 years and all you're at the mercy of is the stock price. Whereas if you do dividend investing, you are getting paid sometimes monthly and quarterly, depending on the stock, on their on their process, on their whatever, their, uh, their situation of how they pay out dividends. You can get paid quarterly or monthly dividends just as a reward, a... a, a, a uh, a treat, not a treat, but just as a benefit of holding that stock. And uh, we'll go through some of these as well. All right. The appeal of dividend growth investing is straightforward. Like I just said, I'm an idiot. I can do it. And I've been doing it for a long time and it's paid off. Uh, so let's go. You buy into stocks that pay rising dividends year after year. And then you, re then you reinvest those dividends into additional shares that also pay more year after year, you're compounding. And that's kind of like I said with the crypto too on Voyager. And there is a link below if you want to sign up for Voyager, you win, I win. It's wonderful. Look for the Voyager thing in the description below. I highly recommend it. Again, just entertainment, not financial advice. You guys got to do your own research, man. My goal on this YouTube channel is to let you guys start using that little brain of yours. Use some due diligence, uh, cognitive reasoning skills, bullshit detector, all that stuff that you should have uh, that has not been weaned out of you through public school or watching TV. So let's keep going. The end result is an ever-growing number of shares you own, uh, coupled with rising dividends from each share. This doubles down on the power of compounding. Compounding is the greatest word. That should be capitalized, bolded, and quoted, and can generate staggering wealth over time. Yes, this is true. Now, you also have to kind of manage this stuff because I had Disney thought it was cute at the time to buy shares of Disney for my kids. You know, Disney's gone completely crazy. The stock's not doing that great. And they stopped paying a dividend. So I hold this Disney stock. I'm get, It's down. I don't know what to do. It's just kind of sitting there like, like a turd. I may just dump it, get the cash out, and then put that into a Starbucks or something that pays a nice dividend and is going to be around a while paying a dividend. So Disney kind of is an example where I'm saying... It's not all unicorns and rainbows. you got to manage these stocks you are buying. And there's various places to go look for the kings of dividends, uh, the companies that pay dividends growing every year and have a great track record. Yeah, don't look for the short-term win because, again, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon with this stuff. And time goes quick, dudes. You're 25 now. Next thing you know, you're 50. It goes like that. It really does. Uh, so why not start now? You don't need that shiny new Tesla. Trust me. You don't. Uh, let's go. Let's see. Dividend. Growth investing works in theory, but it also works in practice. Bolded, this email highlights real-world investors who have put the power of long-term dividend growth investing to work and reap the benefits. 
Yeah, so let's go through some examples here. This guy, Earl, uh, 500,000 plus portfolio, built a 500 uh, plus thousand dollar plus stock portfolio despite never making more than 20,000 a year and having a wife and three children. God bless him. Uh, he started investing in stamps and bonds and mutual funds and then blue chip dividend stocks like IBM and Coca-Cola. Uh, the not so secret secret of Earl's wealth in his own word in and oh my god I can't read today <clears throat> in his own words is as follows here is Earl instead of taking the dividends and pocketing it let it reinvest itself and increase my shares the more shares I had the more dividends I had and eventually the more money I have down the road yeah if people just want things now me 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 our, our whole Western society is greed, gimme, 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 selfish, let's get fat, let's get lazy. And if you can go against the grain, that is where you win in life. Do not do what the masses are doing, go against it. And it's like with investing, when people are greedy in the market, that you may want to sell. When people are fear, 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 that's when you want to buy. Look at 2008, watch The Big Short, watch that movie, it's a great movie, uh, on the uh, housing market bus, and just it's just interesting. Because if you go along with the herd, you always got to have that cognitive reasoning, that, that uh, situation awareness. Going, what are people doing? Why are they all meh, 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 making the same talking points and all the same? Just say bull crap and say, how can I take advantage of this? Like crypto is a great experience a, example now. People are unsure what it's going to do. Uh, I don't know. It may be a time to start buying these dips and keep adding dollar cost average, like with these dividend stocks, dollar cost average. Again, that's just, from my experience, works. It's not financial advice. Of course, you guys should know better. But let's go. So that was Earl. He didn't take the immediate gratification of uh, getting $50 every quarter and spending it on a steak. He just kept that rolling. And you forget it. You set it, and you forget it, and then blammo. Next thing you know, you're sitting on a $500,000 portfolio. Yeah, let's go through number two. Stephanie donates $5 million to charity. All right. She is known as the Oracle of Buffalo, a play on Warren Buffett's name, uh, was able to am amass a mid seven figure net worth despite having a normal job. She passed away at the age of 101. 101, baby. Stephanie worked for 44 years at the Buffalo Veterans Affair Medical Center and earned a whopping $23,000 a year when she retired in 1994. Her husband, who was significantly older than her, made $6,000 a year as a machinist and retired in 58. Holy crap. Stephanie's wealth was a result of her investing, not of a high income. She invested with a financial advisor for much of her life. She was a proponent of long-term buy-and-hold investing. One of her best long-term holdings was Medtronic. I hold that. Uh, now a dividend aristocrat, and aristocrat is one of these dividend companies that have been paying awesome dividends for years and years and years, and there are lists out there where to find these. So just Google dividend aristocrat, dividend king, so you can find certain companies to buy in. And they're not, ex you know, they're just staple companies like Procter & Gamble, you know, Clorox, uh, you know, some some realty companies. Uh, boy, Starbucks. I don't drink Starbucks. I do not. I, I don't like the taste of it. I don't like all the crap they put in it, even though you say not to. I just don't like Starbucks, but I own their stock and it's done really well for me because I look at all the other sheeples out there who are hooked on Starbucks. You know, I don't agree with some of the politics of the Starbucks owner, but who cares? They're making money. Money is money and money to me is freedom. All right. Three, Grace Corner, $7 million fortune. Uh, let's see. She worked as a secretary. Uh, apparently the only job she ever had. She never married and never had children. Uh, 35 after working, oh my God, these are really old stories. And 35 after working for at Abbott for four years, she purchased three shares of Abbott for 60 bucks a share. She held those shares for 75 years and reinvested the dividends when she passed away at the age of 120, 10. Her estate was worth 7 million. So it sounds like she never got to really enjoy her money. She just probably bought these shares and probably forgot about them, but she had $7 million. So her offspring, oh, she had an offspring. So this, oh my God. Okay. I'm not going to say anything. Those three Abbott shares purchased for $180, which is the equivalent of $3,600 in 2022, were worth around $7 million uh, when she passed away. Abbott is a dividend king thanks to its 50 years of consecutive dividend increases. Grace's example highlights the power of buying quality dividend payers and holding for the long run. 
So she never married, never had children. And if she didn't do a will, and she didn't do a will right or a trust correctly, I bet the state now has her money. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. That's the fear, the scariness of not having a will, mainly a living trust where you can dictate where your money's going to go based on certain conditions. Uh, yeah, that's scary. I hope she had that because even a will, the state can come in and commandeer all your assets and everything. And no one's going to claim them. Guess what? Your wonderful state takes them and gives them to people that don't deserve it. And that's just scary, man. You got to get your get your crap together. You can do it online. You can do a will, living trust get it notarized or whatever. It's not that painful. You just spend an hour or two and get it done and say, hey, here's my wealth. I may only have 20,000 bucks, but if I croak, this 20,000 bucks will go to this group, but this group has to prove they are not these bad people or they're going to do it with this, blah, blah, blah. You set the conditions on a, was a living revocable trust? Look it up. Call uh, Fidelity. They'll help you. All right. What are we doing? Blah, blah, blah. So, oh, janitor. Ronald Reed amasses portfolio worth nearly $8 million. He was a janitor who built a staggering fortune despite not having a high income. Ronald's success is largely from being frugal enough to save money consistently a long life. He lived in 92. Oh, yeah. Uh, buying and holding dividend stocks for the long run. Ronald invested directly, meaning that he uh, held physical shares of stock. He invested in quality blue chip dividend stocks like Wells Fargo, Procter & Gamble, I mentioned, Colgate, Palmolive. These are all staple companies. Procter Gamble is toilet paper, paper towels, uh, housing stuff, everyday living stuff. People need to wipe their butts. And uh, you're always going to have Procter and Gamble's, man. And you're always going to buy toilet paper. Whenever the uh, meteor fears come by, people are going to run buy toilet paper. You know what I mean? Uh, he not only held for the long run, but he also reinvested dividends back into his portfolio. All right. And this Ann turns 5000 into $20 million. She invest, started investing at 38 during the depths of the Great Depression. Uh, she gave her investment money to her youngest brother to invest. He started his career as a stockbroker. I mean, he didn't steal it. The firm he worked for went belly up and answered, oh, it went to zero. <laughs> but she was determined to invest successfully. Uh, never give your money to someone else to invest. I learned that lesson. Even though they're a big firm like an Ameriprise or whatever, do not trust these financial wealth advisors. Their goal is to make what, oh my God, how to fees and expenses off of your money. I invested with this one group I mentioned and four years, my whole portfolio was flatlined. Why am I not making any money? Then I look at all the stuff they're doing to pay and all this. The fees were outlandish. The interest rates are 12, 15% on these, uh, on these accounts. Uh, the expenses, I went, whoa, I trusted you guys and I'm an idiot for doing that. Couldn't wait to get my money away from them faster than I could. And I even signed up for a stupid annuity. I was so dumb. Don't do annuities, guys. Oh my God, I'm stuck. I can actually surrender now if I want to. I'm out. I'm out the seven year period. But my God, it's scary when you go to these people and like this lady, even her brother took her money and lost it. Don't do your own research. You have a brain. You're not that dumb. Sit down and spend some time. And a genius or an expert is only someone that has done it a day before you. And if you look at the same information he looked at and spend your time concentrating on it. You're going to be just as good as that person. Come on. Don't trust financial advisors. Do not trust wealth advisors. Trust them at your own peril. That is my my advice, my experience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but anyway, Ann was determined to invest successfully in 44, 51 age, uh, years of age. She invested 5000 uh, she gave her a 50 year compounding period, despite starting at 51 or 5,000 was more than 20 million at the time of her death. Uh, and was an IRS auditor who retired in 43. Ooh. Uh, and May 31 50 at the time of retirement, her wealth came from her extreme frugalness. She reportedly saved 80% of her salary coupled with her focus of buying into companies with leading brands, reinvested dividends and holding for the long run. Uh, she compounded her investments at 20% annually which uh, would be one of the law, best long-term investing records of all time. Yeah, enough of that. Uh, so anyway, put your dividend growth investing to work for yourself. The five examples above show that investing in individual stocks of great businesses, rolling dividends back into your portfolio and having a long-term mindset can produce breathtaking results. You don't have to go into it alone in finding and monitoring high quality businesses that pay rising dividends. There is information out there and do your own research. Do you like Coca-Cola? Go invest in Coca-Cola. If they do stuff you don't like, political or ideological or marketing or selling, don't buy them. 
uh, go with companies you like that pay a dividend, that have been paying a decent dividend for years. Don't just buy one that just started paying dividend two years ago because they may crank it real high just to attract investors and then blam it two years later, they drop the dividend or lower it and then you're stuck holding their stock and it's like, uh, what did I do here? No. Ah. Yeah, watch that. Now, the only problem with this email is these are all based on people who lived a long time. Notice that over 90 years, 100 years, that's redonkulous to me because it sounds like they never touched their wealth. So if you ever watch Yellowstone, they had a great line in the last uh, episode of season four. Beth goes to the criminal dude, life isn't a longevity contest. It is a quality contest, quality of life. It's not to see how long you can live. It's the quality of your life. And I, I get that these people compound and they made money. But again, was their quality of life good? Did they kind of enjoy a little bit of the money? Did they treat themselves to their money? Uh, you know, not going out buying shiny new objects and wasting money on cars. Anyway, guys, financial advice, new cars are the biggest waste of money. Do not buy a new car. Go to CarMax, get one that's two years old, and all the depreciation will already be gone. And you'll get a car that's going to last you as long as you take care of it. Blammo, financial advice from the Rocco Taco Mining Channel. Ignore it at your own peril. All right. Yeah, so anyway, these people live forever, and the quality of life is more important than the longevity. And if these people left the earth with all this money, what good is it in my attitude, too? Again, you don't want to burn it all to zero, but again, you just don't want to, hey, I bought shares in 1910, and now they're worth $20 million. Well, what would you do with that? Did you let the state come in and take your uh, estate from you when you passed away, or did you actually maybe help others that really needed the help, not were just identity people that needed the help? You know what I mean? Did you... uh did you go enjoy the world, see the world? I don't know. I just don't know. As an IRS agent, this lady, I don't know. She probably worked her 30 years in a cube hating life and then got out and said, well, now what do I do? You know, I don't know. I, you just don't know. There's a lot of backstory missing here. But the fact is, if you live a thousand years, yeah, holding a stock and compounding is going to do well. But ten to, I think if you set a 20-year thing, don't set a 50-year thing. Say you're 20. And then if you're happy, odds are you're not going to need that money because you're going to grow in your career and uh, hopefully, and you're going to maybe start your own business and uh, be uh, immune from layoffs, being fired, all that crap that employers put on good working people. So in the nutshell, for me, reinvesting dividends is a great way. I have seen my portfolio grow, uh, not just buying these shiny objects like Tesla all the time. That is speculation buying, um, as with crypto. But uh, now if I can put my part of my crypto of small percentage on, say, Voyager or BlockFi and get interest, that's great. That it, that lessens the speculation where I'm actually making some money off the stuff I have and reinvesting it. So it does work. Don't let these stories kind of discourage you that you're going to wait 50 years until you're feeble and not touch your money. But you can start reinvesting in some companies. And I have the list here. Let me show you. These aren't. This isn't accurate, but this is kind of gives you a nutshell of some of the companies I have. <clears throat> this is the horrible Apple stock page, uh, stock app on my Mac. Uh, I do not like it. I do not like some of the articles they push because there's spins on them. But let's go through. Oh, what are we down? Oh, we're hovering today. Let's see. You can click on it. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Starbucks. I, Starbucks has done really well for me. They're paying a yield of 2.19%. So you just go to a stock you like. And again, I would look up dividend aristocrat, aristocrat kings on your favorite search engine and see what the list comes back. There's a few sites which list the top 50, top 100. They list how often they pay out a dividend, the yield on the dividend, like this one's 2.19%, uh, and how long they've been doing it, and what's their ranking. And you buy quality companies, again, like Procter & Gamble. Everyone needs to wipe their butt, you know? And then they're always making toilet paper and paper towels and stuff. Verizon, everyone has Verizon almost. It's at t Verizon. It seems like Verizon, even though they have issues, is still a player. I own them and they have a yield of 5%. All right, Home Depot, my God. You know, there used to be all these small, when I was growing up, all these small well, hardware stores, Heckinger, is it Heckinger? Just crappy little stores in the day, but now you got these big box stores, albeit some of the crap they sell is crap. But where else are you gonna go? Lowe's and Home Depot are two winners and they pay a 2.2% yield. Um, uh, Altria is the, I think the cigarette, I can't remember right now. Come on news, I don't know the news isn't loading. Altria Group is a sin stock, I think it's a tobacco. Johnson & Johnson, I know, hit or miss, I don't know what you think. I get nervous of pharmaceutical companies because they're always being sued. 
Uh, yeah, you got to watch out. Reputations aren't great with some of these, but I own them nonetheless. And look, they're doing well, obviously, for the parent obvious reasons. Uh, Lowe's, they pay a 1.38%. Pepsi, again, I like these stocks. Uh, the only one I really don't like is, the, again, the pharmaceuticals too much. So my conclusion, my thought process is everyone drinks coffee. I see the lines out the butt, you know, out the door, right? Out, the, out their butts. And uh, they're always drinking coffee. Yeah, they're always drinking coffee. And uh, Pepsi, people are always drinking sugary subjects. Look how fat we're getting. Look at photos from people from the 60s and 70s. And then now look at people today. We're so fat. It's disgusting. Anyway, uh, let's go on. Uh, MO is uh, tobacco. So I got coffee, tobacco, home supplies. Everyone has a cell phone. See what I'm doing here? A realty company kind of took a hit because of the uh, commercial realty, realty space was not being used. But again, people still have to pay their mortgages on the real estate property, the commercial real estate. So they're coming back up and they pay a monthly dividend at 4.43. AbV is a medical uh, pharmaceutical as well, I believe. And they've always gone up. I like them. BTI, I forget what they are. The phone, Exxon, of course. Look at this thing. I've had this thing for years, since the 90s, baby. And this thing is now at 4.47, and they're going back up to the high 80s. It's, it's been down here, man. And so, man, look at that. For a dividend stock, yeah. My cost basis, I have no idea what it is because I've held it so long, so I don't know. This might just be my little engine that keeps producing dividends and reinvesting. Uh, Broadridge Financial, they're uh, 1.67. CCI is, uh, I think, a really commercial reality. Cisco, of course, what are they paying? 2.72, then some energy companies. I got two of those, 3.29, 3.75. General Mills, food, 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 even though it may be like gener uh, generic, generic, uh, what do you call that? Oh, uh, generated food. What do you call it? I don't know. Processed food. Uh, Hormel Foods, they're paying 2.1%. Kimberly Clark is another toilet toiletry type company. Ever needs to wipe your butt? That's my attitude. And I'm sticking to it. Mickey Donald's, again, I don't eat this stuff because I don't want to be on the crapper. If I eat McDonald's, I'll definitely need my Procter Gamble and Kimberly Clark products to clean up the mess afterwards. Uh, yeah, but again, people eat McDonald's. Uh, Medtronic is the one in that article that that lady held, and they pay a 2.29 percent. Uh, Triple One Realty, there's Omnicron, Oracle, of course. They seem to be the quiet tech company that just keeps making lots of money, and they pay 1.5 percent. They don't have any really. I mean, Larry Ellison, he just wants a sale, right? He's just racing sailboats. Pfizer, boo, yeah, we get that, we understand that. Uh, Procter and Gamble again, they pay a 2.32 percent. Southern Company is a utility, and wow, they're they're doing really well. Three point eight eight percent. WP Carry, wow, not too bad. Look at this one, five point two nine percent. And here's an index fund I have from Fidelity that pays one point two percent. I kind of covering all my bases here in case I do pick a turd. I have my index fund, which does kind of the big boys, the alphabets, you know, which is Google, the the horrible Meta, Facebook, the the Twits. Uh, the techie companies. I think NVIDIA is in there, and Tesla and stuff like that. Here is my crypto. Uh, Pirate Chain is still down. That's a privacy coin. Again, I bought this at three bucks, I think. Dummy, dumb move. I'm learning to stick with the big boys like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, what's Tesla doing? I, these And these Tesla and NVIDIA, these are speculation stocks, so they do not pay a dividend. So there you go, guys. There you go. There are some examples of what to look at in dividend. Again, it's not a, it's not a sprint. You can buy these dollar cost average in monthly. That's a win right there. You can say every month, I'm gonna put in a couple hundred bucks, set it and forget it. It's the best way. If you have to do it by hand, you're not gonna do it because people are lazy and they don't like to see their money go to places that's gonna benefit them. So set it and forget it is my advice, not financial advice, do what works for you, don't go broke. I mean, because again, once you put this money in, you should just leave it, let it grow. And you will be pleasantly surprised as years go by, right? It's going to grow your wealth. All right, that's my experience. This has worked for me. And I got the email and I said, yeah, let me just talk about this and go from there. And uh, there's how you look for it. I gave you a little subset. There's a lot more out there. 
a lot of different ways people buy these things. Um, go look for yourself. See what you like. Again, I try to pick what people are using. Starbucks, McDonald's, Home Depot, Lowe's, Verizon, Exxon, blah, blah, blah. Get it? You get what I'm doing here? Um, then there's some companies that are just there, that have been there forever, that provide stuff you just don't think about anymore. You know, wires, fuses, uh, small stuff like that. But it's needed, and they are doing really well. Yeah. Look at Mo, look at MO, man. 6.97%. I know. I hope this helps you guys, gives you an idea of what you can do with your money. It's not buy this and hope it goes up. That's kind of a not a great strategy, in my opinion, uh, to hope it's just going to go up. You know, like for Tesla, it's all over the place. It's up, it's down, and the, the CEO must tweet something. It goes down, it goes up. It just drives you nuts. I just want to buy these companies that are just the, not the tortoise in here, but these staple companies that are just churning and churning. There's a demand for it. They are part of the economy. And they're just keep trudging along and you're getting your dividends every quarter and it's up and down up you know if the market's up and down who cares if it's way down guess what you get your dividends you're going to buy a lot more of that stock because the dividend prices are lower and you're going to get a lot more that will start compounding for you and when it go up you know what you get a little bit less so it's almost better when they're down markets and your your dividends are getting paid out and you're reinvesting yeah it's been good guys bottom line it's been good Please check it out. Look up dividend investing. You don't need to sign up with anybody and pay them. The information is out there on how to do it. You can go through Fidelity and buy the stocks. And sometimes you go to like computershare.com and buy the stocks directly and maybe get a certificate. I think you can actually frame one of the shares if you want on your wall and say, here's all the stocks. in." But I don't do that anymore. I bought all mine through my IRA and some after tax money as well. But I do it through my all through my IRA so the dividends aren't taxed. They're reinvested. So you can do it through your Roth IRA. I mean, your Roth, yeah, your Roth IRA or your basic IRA. And uh, just have it all reinvested and you're not going to be taxed. Now, the regular IRA, you'll be taxed when you take it out as you have to make draws from it. That's why I hate to get another video going, but I, I'm, a, I'm a newbie at this stuff. You can do a, a IRA conversion to a Roth and then start getting that money and paying the tax dollars now. You do a little bit at a time. That way, when you put it in the Roth, then you're done. You already paid your tax on it. And you don't have to worry about paying taxes when you're in your 60s and 70s. So there's always strategy there. That is where I would ask a, a tax person on that. Not a financial or wealth advisor. I don't trust those guys. They may try to sell you an annuity or something bullshit. And then, uh, and then you're stuck. And they took your money and you're paying them lots of fees and expenses. I would ask a CPA that knows about IRA conversions to a Roth. And if you're getting in your 50s, you may want to start thinking about that. And you'll pay tax on it, but you do a little bit a year. But then you're putting it into your Roth where then you're done. You don't have to worry about the tax anymore. You know what I mean? You're taking a hit now versus down the road, which could be substantial, right? Because when you take the draws in your IRA, that's now income. Kablamo, kablamo, kablamo. The point of the government is to take your money from you. And right now they do it peacefully, but they may, like they do in Canada, seize it and take it by force one day. You just don't know. You really don't know. You're kind of, we're all just at the mercy of these people we put in office, which is sad. So anyway, I hate to end on that note, but dividend reinvesting, fine quality stocks, same works with crypto. And uh, go to Voyager, look at how that works. There's a link below. Check it out. Again, don't sign up for anything for uh, dividend reinvesting companies and do it yourself. I do it all through Fidelity and you can do it through... Um, Oh, uh, T. Rowe Price, no, Schwab, Vanguard, and some other places. I, I, uh, I share stuff like that. I trust. Did I trust capital? Yeah. You can do it all through those as well. Uh, go forth through great things. Check it out. It's worth spending an hour just looking around. Again, look at dividend aristocrat, aristocrat kings, and you'll get a list of them that's out there. And you, you'll recognize these, and you'll see the history of the dividend and the quality of the stock. And these are stocks you just buy dollar cost average in each month and forget about it. And if you get a raise, say you make an extra thousand bucks a year, split that over a year and reinvest it in dividends. I mean, and then you just act like you never got the raise. And that's what I always told people. Keep living like you lived on your current salary and uh, put the extra in, any bonuses, just dump it into um, your dividend stocks. Because what do you do? Piss it away on some stupid thing you don't need or people want to appreciate? No. Take care of yourself first. Then when you have the wealth, you can take care of others. Right? Does that make sense? I don't know. It's like on an airplane. When the uh, 
oxygen bag drops. You put it on yourself first so you can help others. Duh. All right, help yourself first. Get your wealth built up. Make yourself a better version. Uh, improve yourself. And uh, yeah, you'll do well with this. All right, I'm out. Hope this helps. Hope this is informative. It's done well for me. And I just thought I would share this. I don't have a 30-minute video, but who cares? You can't condense it in like a minute. You got to just give world work, real world experience, talk it out and give people the information that you guys can now take and go forth to check it out. Let me know if what has worked for you, if there's any dividend stocks that you recommend uh, and your time frame. I'm This is a long term, guys. This is at least 10 to 20 years plus, you know, you're just setting it and forgetting it and you're going to be uh, you're going to be rewarded. Yeah. All right. I'm out. Take care. Go forth to great things. Save your money, folks. Save your money. All right, I'm out. Take care.